Hi everyone, welcome to Production Operations Management, Chapter 1, Productivity. In this video, I'm going to show you how to calculate productivity values for a given data set. And then I will also show you how to record a macro and use the same macro to uh, in another worksheet. So we are going to start entering the values for this worksheet that uh, we have done in the computer lab as well. The selling price we have $24, material cost we have uh, $4, and the wage of the workers $16. The overhead rate is that's the rate of change for the overhead 0 0.2, and the $300 is the direct uh, the fixed cost of the overhead. And the weekly work hours per worker is 40 as assumed and then we are going to enter the output labor input all the values the formulas in but before doing that I want to go to the developer tab and record a macro but if your developer tab is not there you can activate it by going to file options customize ribbon and check the developer tab click OK so mine is already there so what I will do is I will just start recording the macro my macro I'm just gonna call it productivity and then I will click OK now I will enter the values one by one the formulas the output formula is the selling price with the dollar sign times the output in units and the labor input is equal to the hourly wage with the dollar sign, weekly work hour with the dollar sign, times the number of workers. The material input is equal to material cost per unit times material feet. And the overhead is going to be related to the labor input, but we have a fixed cost for overhead and plus 0 0.2 times the labor input then I can find my labor productivity which is the output in dollars divided by the labor input and material productivity is equal to output in dollars divided by material input and multi-factor productivity is equal to output divided by sum of all the inputs once I have done everything I'm gonna highlight the first row and double click and I get all my values in then I will stop recording my macro so let's see what happened in the macro itself so we go to the macros and the productivity is my macros name then I'm going to click edit and I will try to see what's happening in my macro so my, what my macro does is whenever if you put this uh, starting uh, sign which is kind of a quotation mark then you can put some information this is my productivity macro this uh, rows will not run you can put any description about your ma macro here then what macro does is selects E10 and then assigns a formula to the, the to the cell by using this row column representation. So what what it says is the value of E10 is going to be row five column minus one. It means that one column to the left of E10 and row five multiply by the same row ta uh, of of e10 but the column minus 3 let's try to see what it is I go to e10 and e10 to calculate e10 that's the output what I did is I multiplied b10 times 
B5. So this is the same row as E10, and this is row 5. This is just one column to the left, and this is three columns to the left. Excel wanted to have this kind of a representation rather than this E10. But if you want, you can change this and you can make it as represented as E, uh, B10 and like regular Excel representation. That's okay too. But we are not going to touch that right now. And everything, all the formulas are entered, then what it does is selects the first row of the values and copies and pastes to the remaining cells in our data set. Then it is just also it has recorded my scroll I could get rid of that scroll and I could get rid of the select so my macro is done I'm going to save this and what it says is this file is read only I'm gonna save this macro in another file I'm gonna copy and paste this to desktop and what I will do is I will save this file as macro enabled workbook. If you just save it as an Excel SX file, it is not going to have the macro recorded in. So I have chapter one lab and I will call this with macro. Now I saved it and I'm gonna close this macro now what I want to do is I want to just see if my macro works. I can delete all the information again and I can go here and insert a command button somewhere here and I want to run the productivity macro when I click on it. I can edit the text in here and I can call it calculate now if the macro works I can just click on it and everything will be filled in yes my macro works and everything is there so the mission is accomplished hallelujah now what we want to do is we want to see if the same macro can be done worked in example 4 as well and I go to exa example 4 and I need to enter all the values in example 4 selling price was not provided so I could just enter 1 if I enter 0 all my productivity calculations will go to 0 that's why I just enter 1 as a unit term the material cost is $6 the wages $12 <clears throat> the overhead rate is 1.5 times the labor cost but the, there is no fixed cost and the weekly work hours is 40 so uh, when I enter all this information I can again add a command button here and productivity I can call this calculate now if I click on it what it did is it only copied and pasted the first 10 or 12 rows and it did not copy and paste the remaining cells and what I have is I have data until cell 60 uh, row 61 to edit my macro I can go to macros and edit and autofill destination here it says case 21 I can turn that into case 61 and I can save this I'm gonna close the macro again let's see if it works this time now it's say, uh, calculated all the values up to 61 now what I want to do is I want to just show you how to use the pivot tables in here so that I could just look at my monthly data information so what is my uh, labor and material and multi-factor productivity values every month so to do that I can highlight all the data that I have control shift and down when I have all data values are selected all the information selected in my table I can go ahead and insert a pivot table using this range 
in a new worksheet. Now the pivot table will open as a blank pivot table, but I can add anything into the pivot table. The first thing I want to add is the week to the rows. So I want to see the weeks on the rows. And all the weeks are shown. And what I want to do is I want to enter the labor productivity material and multi-factor productivity values in there as the values. The labor productivity, material product productivity, I can drag them down and the multi-factor productivity. Now what it says is it provides you the sum of those values every month. I don't want the sum, I want the averages. So I can change the sum by clicking on this arrow here and the value field setting. I can turn that into an average. And I can do that for the other two. And then the third one. Now if everything is the average I have the weekly averages for my labor material and multi-factor productivities but I do not want the weekly averages I want the monthly averages so I can click on the dates the weeks and right click and I can expand and collapse this or make group them actually that's the better uh, place I can group these and I can group them into months or quarters or both of them so let's just make it quarters and months, highlight it together. And I can click OK. Now what I can see is I can see that the quarter one, January, February, and March, I have a decrease in my labor productivity and decrease in my material productivity, hence a decrease in my multi-factor. And I can see the numbers in here and I can report these values. I can also create a pivot chart using these values by going to pivot chart and I can see the changes in my all values here as a pivot chart. I can ch change the chart type, I can make it a line chart as you have seen here or I can make it a pie chart wouldn't work, it's not a good idea. Area chart, I think it's a good idea to maybe have a column chart or a line chart, one of those. So I'm going to have the line chart in there and I will just click OK. So in the pivot chart that you see, these are the averages for every month and this is your graph and for every quarter it's shown as well. I think this should be sufficient for now and Excel has a lot of other details but for now I think it's a quick introduction to the, the features of Excel and also the labor productivity. I am going to assign this question, example 3, as a homework, maybe one of the questions in the Excel assignment. Thanks for watching.